In this video, I'm going to teach you which features to use to compare hearing aids and which features you shouldn't. Coming up. Hi guys, Dr. Cliff AUD here with HearingTracker.com, the leading independent consumer review platform for hearing aids, hearing centers, and hearing care providers. Make sure you don't miss any of our new videos by clicking the subscribe button below. There are literally hundreds of different hearing aids on the market, so finding the perfect hearing aid for you can be extremely difficult, especially if you don't know which features you should be using to compare these different hearing aids. That's why I created a list of 11 different features that you should use to compare hearing aids. The first feature is hearing aid style. There are a variety of different styles of hearing aids ranging anywhere from the invisible in the canal style all the way up to the traditional behind the ear style. We've also recently seen the release of what I like to call the fashion hearing aid. The fashion hearing aid is a device that they're no longer trying to hide. They're actually trying to make it aesthetically pleasing so individuals can use it almost like a fashion accessory. The second feature you should look for is the amplification capabilities. If you have a severe to profound hearing loss, you need to make sure that you have a device that is capable of meeting the prescription for your particular type of hearing loss. So if you have that severe to profound hearing loss, you're not going to be able to go with an invisible in the canal hearing aid. It is just not realistic. And once you get these first two features identified, then you can move on to the rest of the features. The third feature you should use to compare is color, and there are three different approaches to this. Approach number one is that you just flat out don't care what they look like, so pick whatever color you want. The second approach to this is that you might want it to be non-visible to anybody else. If that's the case, if you're going with something that's invisible in the canal, you generally want the color of the, at least the faceplate to be black. That way it vanishes into your dark ear canal. But if you have a device that goes behind your ear, you generally want to pair it to hair color. The third approach to this is if you want to make a fashion statement. Like I mentioned before, there are now hearing aids that are considered fashion hearing aids. And so if you want something that actually sticks out so you can make a bold statement or some kind of fashion statement, then go with a hearing aid that has the most aesthetically pleasing look to you. The fourth feature you should use to compare is a telecoil. A telecoil will let you get wireless access to a variety of different public venues. These venues can range anywhere from a movie theater all the way to a church and anything in between as long as they have a sign that looks like this. Now another thing that you can use a telecoil for is to actually gain access to the sound on your telephone. As long as your telephone has a strong enough magnetic signal, it will be able to tap into that and pull that sound directly from the phone right into your hearing aid. The fifth feature you should use to compare hearing aids is the IP rating. An IP rating indicates how resistant the hearing device is to particulate matter and to moisture. So when you have an IP rating of let's say IP68, it has the highest amount of dust resistance with the 6 and the highest amount of moisture resistance with the 8. So if you're someone who finds yourself in an environment that has a lot of dirt and debris flying around or you sweat a lot, then you want to get the highest IP rating possible. The sixth feature you should look at is the batteries. Now you have disposable batteries and you have rechargeable batteries. And there are main differences between the two. Obviously the disposable ones you'll use for a period of time and then discard or recycle. And the rechargeable batteries are something that you'll basically plug in every night to get a recharge to last you through the whole next day. Now the pros for having the disposable batteries is that they've been around for a while and they're extremely reliable and you never get caught in a situation where you run out of a charge, you can just remove that battery and put in a brand new one. Now when you're looking at rechargeable batteries, you have a variety of different rechargeable options. There are silver zinc batteries, there are lithium batteries, and there are nickel metal hydride batteries. Now nickel metal hydride is kind of on its way out and it's being replaced with the silver zinc and with the lithium. The silver zinc are terrific because they are completely recyclable. You will have to change them out every year, but they give you a reliable charge throughout the whole day. The lithium rechargeable batteries are ones that you can never remove from the here hearing aid and you just plug your hearing aids into their charger stand every night, those batteries will last you for a while. Eventually they will go out and when they do you're going to have to send them back to the manufacturer to get those lithium batteries replaced. Depending on if you're in warranty or out of warranty that could be a costly thing. Now if you're someone who has finger dexterity issues or vision issues, rechargeable might be the best way to go. 
The seventh feature you'll want to compare is battery size. If you elect to go with the disposable hearing aid batteries, then the battery size is going to likely dictate the size of that device and how long it will power that device. If you go with the very smallest battery, the size 10 battery, you'll get a very short amount of battery life. And if you go all the way up to the size 675 battery, you'll get a lot of battery life. The most common battery size that you'll see out there is size 312. And the size 13 are starting to make more of a push because of the demands for all this wireless technology that is now inside of hearing aids. The eighth thing you want to look for is phone connectivity. There are a variety of different hearing aids out there that will connect with a smartphone either directly to that smartphone or through a different accessory that connects to a smartphone. So when you're comparing different types of hearing aids, you really want to identify what you want to be able to do with that device in terms of its wireless capabilities. Right now, you can directly connect with an iPhone and stream any kind of audio from that phone directly into your hearing aids, whether that is phone calls, music, or even a YouTube video. If you're a bigger fan of Android, you're gonna have to wait a little bit, but they are soon gonna come out with hearing aids that can directly connect with Android phones as well. The ninth thing you should look for is a tinnitus feature. If you're an individual who has tinnitus, and that probability is pretty high since a lot of individuals who have hearing loss also have tinnitus, then you may want to look for a hearing aid that actually has a feature inside of it that has something to do with masking tinnitus. And there are a variety of different ways of going about this. Some hearing aids have white noise maskers that just put in like a static noise through the hearing aids to kind of drown out the sound of your tinnitus, and other ones play even a musical tone. Tone. This musical tone, again, is designed to distract you or mask over that tinnitus. You can also find devices that use more of like organic sounds like ocean waves and things of that nature. Now, if you're not sure which particular sound you would appreciate more, go ahead and download a tinnitus app. You can find them in the, the app store and see which one of those sounds you prefer. The tenth feature you should look for is push button availability. Most hearing aids do have a push button on them, but now that hearing aids are getting smaller and smaller, sometimes they're just getting rid of that push button altogether. But if you want to have more onboard controls, you can get a push button that will allow you to change different programs, and you can actually get a volume wheel or a volume button that will allow you to change volume as well. With the connectivity that's been happening with phones, a lot of individuals are actually switching over to doing these controls on their phone, but if you're someone who does want those onboard controls, then you have to make sure you select a device that has that capability. And the 11th feature that you should use to compare different hearing aids is the accessories. Each hearing aid company makes different accessories, and some of those accessories are better than others. And depending on what your needs are, you may require the use of a particular accessory to get the full function of your particular hearing aids. For instance, if you're someone who wants to stream directly from your TV into your hearing aid so you don't drive your spouse nuts, then you have to make sure that you get a hearing aid that has the availability of getting a TV streamer. But there are a variety of different accessories out there, anything from a phone clip to a remote mic microphone to an FM system. So you have to make sure that you're identifying the right accessories for you and then decide which hearing aids gives you access to those different accessories. There are obviously a lot of different features that you can use to compare different types of hearing aids, but there are also some features that you should really avoid when you're doing your comparison. The first feature that you should avoid comparing is the channels. I know that channels is one of the sexier things to use to compare different hearing aids, but beyond a certain point, the amount of channels, you're not even gonna notice. The difference between a hearing aid with 38 channels and 48 channels, you're just flat out not gonna know which one you're listening to if you did a blind test of those two hearing aids. So to pick one hearing aid over the other because it has more channels is setting yourself up for failure. The second feature you should avoid using to compare different types of hearing aids is a feedback canceller. Each hearing aid manufacturer generally has good feedback cancellation systems inside of their hearing aids, but the only thing that you would have to compare one manufacturer to another is whatever proprietary name they actually called their feedback canceller. In fact, a feedback canceller may not even have the biggest determination of whether or not you're actually going to experience feedback. The largest factor that will dictate whether or not you have feedback is how well that hearing aid has been physically fit to your ear, and that is the responsibility of a hearing care provider. The third factor that you should avoid when comparing hearing aids is a noise reduction feature. 
all hearing aid manufacturers have some level of noise reduction, and you know what? All of them generally perform the same. So don't be lured into this idea that one is better than the other just because you like the name of what they call it in one hearing aid versus what they call it in another. And the fourth thing that you want to avoid when comparing different types of hearing aids is any trademark feature. Different hearing aid manufacturers will likely trademark certain features inside of their hearing aids, when in reality, all the different hearing aid manufacturers have that same type of feature, and they probably have it trademarked a different name. So don't use a trademark name to compare different types of hearing aids, because at the end of the day, most of the hearing aid manufacturers are doing the same things with their features. If you're looking for a great way to explore hearing aid features, I highly recommend checking out Hearing Tracker's hearing aid matching system. After completing a short survey about your listening needs and device preferences, Hearing Tracker will match you with a handful of hearing aids that are most likely to deliver the features that you need. To get started, go to hearingtracker.com, click on Hearing Aids, then click on Help Me Choose. Complete the survey and check out your top matching hearing aids. Remember, this is just a starting point. You'll need to consult a licensed hearing care professional to establish potential candidacy with any matching device. Just remember, it does not matter how good your hearing aid is or how many awesome features it has or how many positive reviews that hearing aid has, unless it has been fit and programmed correctly to your hearing loss prescription. And that is largely the responsibility of your hearing care provider who is also worth comparing. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. And if you want to see other videos just like this one, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time.